So, do you know, I really enjoy cooking out in the woods. It's something I've gotten into more of in the last few years. I enjoy cooking a meal over a fire, and if it comes out great, that's what I really enjoy. But it takes time to learn how to cook over a fire. Let's say you're going to put a roast on. How long does that take? How do you know when it's done? How do you know it's just not burnt on the outside and still raw on the inside? Well, I know the answer is experience. If you gain enough experience cooking over a fire, then you can judge those things. But how can you get that experience, shorten it down, and make sure you don't ruin a whole lot of meals in the meantime? Well, I have something that might interest you. This is the Chef's Temp Final Touch X10 thermometer, and it really does work. If you're interested, keep watching. All right, before we get started, I just want to thank Chef's Temp for sending me the Final Touch X10 so that I could share it with you. So I'll tell you, this arrived sometime in the early spring or late spring, early summer, and I used it a lot. I used it mostly at home, quite honest. I used it while I was barbecuing. I used it for cooking in the kitchen, especially in the oven. And I used it out here in the woods. And I wanted to gain a good amount of experience before I brought it to you and shared it with you how it's something you could use out in the woods. But even if you never intend on using this out in the woods, you still got to look at this thing because this really has revolutionized my way of barbecuing. No more hazardous guests that I think things are done only to cut them open and find that they're still not just pink, but maybe red and still bleeding. So yeah, this really does shorten up the experience, the learning curve, and gives you better meals right from the get-go. I haven't had a fail with this thing yet. Okay, so what I'm probably going to do is give you all the technical specifications in the video description below, but what I wanted to do right now is read to you the key features as they are listed by the company. First off, here's something that is of no small importance. It's the little manual that comes with this thing, and it has guides in the back for temperatures, and I tend to, you know, even though you would think you would know by after a while, I still look at this when it goes when it comes to cooking because yes I use it most often when cooking meat but you can use it when you're cooking just about anything such as maybe a pie even or maybe you're uh, you're cooking up a meat loaf or you're doing you want water at a certain temperature I've even used this for testing of other stoves so that I could know when I was reaching the boiling point beyond just looking for steam and, and bubbles so there is a number of reasons for using this but I'm going to demonstrate all the features that I can and of course we are going to be putting it to a test out here but let me just read a few of the uh, things that the company has to say about this. Fast and super accurate. One second reading time to a 0.7 of a degree Fahrenheit accuracy. And I can attest to that. One second, yes, but more often than not, when you put the probe into a piece of meat, you want to leave it there maybe a second or two. Not too long though, and that's the beauty of this. Unlike all the other probes that I have tried, and I have a few at home, some of the digital or analog ones with the dials on them, and some less expensive digital ones, is they usually take some time to rack up the temperature. This, and that means you're holding your hand near the heat source, not this. You can literally poke it in to the right depth, press the hold button, pull it out without having to worry about burning your fingers, better to wear a glove of course, and then read the temperature. So very, very quick and very, very accurate. Speaking of accuracy, this is, I don't think I've seen another one on the market. You can actually calibrate these. There's instructions in that manual on how to calibrate these to ensure you're getting an accurate temperature because that's one of the things I had uh, difficulty uh, trusting was whether or not the, the analog ones with the dial was it actually reading the right temperature? How did I know? And same thing with the less expensive uh, digital ones. How do I know they're reading the right temperature? Well, with this, if you go through the calibration, calibration process, you can, in fact, ensure that you're actually getting the right temperature, which is really, really cool. That's a feature I haven't seen anywhere else. It has a 270 degree rotation probe. So what does that mean? So obviously, and watch it turn on. It turns on right away as soon as you rotate the probe. There is no on and off button. But you can go out like, like that degree, straight out. But if it's an awkward angle, you can go all the way around to there and still have it work. And when it closes, it shuts itself off. So again, no on-off button, just a matter of opening up the probe. 
What else does it have? It has that big, sharp display that you saw. And what I liked about this, especially if I'm using it, uh, I'm barbecuing and it's uh, evening time over the summer and the sun is directly on the barbecue, I can still see this. And my other ones, my other digital ones, they were the gray on white kind of a digital display, not the big block blue LEDs that this has. And I had trouble seeing the temperature. I had to take it out, look, go back, look again, make sure that I was getting the right temperature. So to me, that is a huge thing. Maybe not to you, but I like the fact that I can see what this is reading. It has an intelligent backlight. Now, what does that mean? It means that it has motion sensitive. So if you lay this down with the probe open, because of course, if you open the probe up, you can see that the temperature is showing there now. Now, if I lay this down with the probe open, it'll go to sleep. That's nice, it's saving battery. But when you pick it up again, it starts activating right again. So you're saving battery and not wasting uh, you know, the battery that you have. It has an auto rotating display. Let's see if I can demonstrate this. Okay, so, oh, by the way, it is also uh, set for Fahrenheit and for Celsius. You can use either. Right now, I have it set in Fahrenheit. That's the Canadian consciousness. We don't know whether we're coming, we're going when it comes to Fahrenheit and centigrade. All right, so now if I turn this over, the display flips with it, so I don't have to try and cock my head around to see whether or not it's still reading the temperature. So that's another nice feature. These are all bonuses that other ones that I've tried just don't have. It has a long battery life. It says 3,000 hours of battery life, or up to three to five years, depending on how often you use it. So the battery is replaceable. It is inside. It is in a waterproof concealment area. So you do have to unscrew it to get at the battery source here. And uh, then, uh, well, that's part of the waterproofness, which I'll get to in a minute. It has a magnetic backing. So Great on a barbecue. It's not so much of a use to me here out in the stove, but or out in the woods. But what I found is on the barbecue is that I could just lay this down on the side tray of the barbecue at home or on the stove in the kitchen, and the magnetic will keep it from sliding off. So that's another small nice thing. Uh, I mentioned the calibration. So it has, does have all of these features, and I think there was one thing that I'm missing, which is the waterproof. And where is that at? I will be sure to put the technical specifications. Maybe I have it here on another page. Hold on one second. It's a little bit cold out here. You probably, oh, here we go. Here's the specifications. Now, I am going to give you the specifications very quickly because I just will list them in the video description because I think what you really want to see is this thing in action. So the length overall is 6.69 inches, which is 169 centimeters. The width that is widest, 1.57 inches, 40 millimeters, and its thickness through is 0.9 of an inch, 24 millimeters. The weight, 4.4 ounces or 124 grams, and the probe is is a four inch type K thermocouple. Now, I don't know what that really means, but what is important is the actual temperature area is right in the very tip. And that's important when you go to uh, shove this into a piece of meat that you know exactly where it is on the probe that is reading the temperature. Because of course you want to get in to the middle of the meat to get what the temperature reading is inside there. Uh, performance specifications. You can use this in anything from minus 4 to 122 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, we're right on the freezing mark here today, so I'm just about below the uh, the temperature. I'm just about at the the lowest temperature you're, you should be using it at, um, which is minus 20 to 50 degrees Celsius. The temperature range will read between minus 22 and 572 degrees Fahrenheit. Wow. Okay, I don't know how often I'd be using minus 22 and where I'd even measure something with that cold, but a 572, there's not very many meals you're going to cook that you have to worry about getting temperatures up to that uh, hot, that hot, but it's nice to know that you can if you need it. Response time, as I mentioned, is um, about one second. I say about one second because I have found that um, uh, sometimes it takes a second and a half or two seconds. Regardless, it is so, so much faster than using the other digital ones that I've used. And there's just no comparing it when it comes to using this one against the analog, the dial ones. Uh, I, there's what I was looking for, IP67. So this can be submerged underwater for one meter for 30 minutes. I can't see that happening, but uh, you know, it's good to know, I suppose, if you're out and you're barbecuing and for whatever reason you left this on the side of your barbecue and it started raining, it's good to know that it's not going to be ruined by the rain. It does use two AAA batteries. And as I mentioned, you can switch it back and forth between uh, centigrade and Fahrenheit, depending on what your preference is. Uh, 
yeah, okay, so now what we're going to do is I'm going to get a fire going because I have a small pork roast, a pork loin actually, three quarter pound pork loin that I'm going to cook up and demonstrate. And as I mentioned, I've done this enough times. Sometimes I've been a little bit uh, under, under, didn't estimate it correctly. I got it a little bit overdone. And pork is one of those things you want it to get it to the right temperature to be safe but you don't want to get it so cooked that it loses its texture and its flavors. So that's why I chose a piece of pork. It's also only three quarters of a pound, so it's something I can cook up relatively quickly. Okay, what I need to get do, uh, started is a fire in my firebox freestyle, which is what I'm going to be using, and I'm going to be using the coffee spit to put the pork on, and that's, uh, that's how I'm going to cook this. So I'll bring you back once we're ready to start. So I think it's fair to say that the pork loin is not ready yet. I can still see pink around some of the edges. In fact, I'll have to rotate that in a minute, but I wanted to give you a bit of an update and tell you how it is that I'm cooking this while I have the opportunity. So I am using the Firebox Freestyle in its six-sided bushcraft mode, the rectangular mode, and I'm using the coffee spit, also available through the Firebox stove store, and I'm using a windscreen around it. Now, right below, let me see if I can focus down a little bit. You can see that it's sitting in the box that the Freestyle comes with, but it's also sitting on top of a small fiberglass mat just to give extra protection to the forest floor but it, this is working out really well so the concept here is that it's the meat is not only receiving direct heat from the front as the flames come up by it's not in the flames it's beside the flames but the flames are passing up so it's getting radiant heat from the flames but in addition the side walls of the stove are quite hot and they're radiating heat out from that back portion and with the windscreen there the heat only really has one place to go which is up so it's get the meat is getting heated from below as well as from the front as we see it here all right still a few more minutes before i'll check the temperature with the final touch pro or x10 but when i do i'll bring it back all right in full disclosure it doesn't really matter if you've got the final touch x10 with you or not you still have to pay attention to what you're doing so um, i don't think i mentioned the way i'm regular regulating heat here is i'm moving the stove back and forth closer and further away from the piece of meat but I checked it a minute ago and I think we are there now when you go to insert your thermometer at the end of the probe make sure you're not touching the metal of course because it's going to conduct heat so you want to get into the thickest part of the meat without actually touching 148 and I was aiming for 145 I'll try it in a couple of other places that's interesting a little cool on that end but 149 there Almost dropped it, didn't I? Okay, so it seems to be a little cool on that end, but the rest of the meat is at temperature. So many of you will know this, but if you take the meat off now and just leave it sit without touching it, it will continue to cook because of the residual heat in there. If you cut it up and start serving it right away, of course, that's what you're going to get is whatever the temperature is now. So what I'm going to do is I am going to take it off of the spit, and I know it's well cooked at this end of the uh, roast, if maybe not a little bit so much, but three-quarter pound roast, I'm not even sure I'm going to be finishing this up. I may just put it back on the spit, finishing the last few pieces up, but as I let it sit, it's going to continue to cook. So 145 is the recommended temperature. Let's just see what it looks like on inside. All right, I got it off of the fire as quickly as I could. I'm going to pull it from the spit. If I can get it off the spit, that is. Oh, the juices are coming out of it. Here we go, coming off the spit now. All right, first time I used the, the coffee spit, not the last time, I'll definitely be using it some more. All right, let's get first glance on the inside. Let's see what we have. Ooh, the text, can you see the texture of that? Oh, yes, I'll cut a second piece off so you can see this. Can you see that? Just the slightest, slightest touch of pink through here, which for me, with if it's not wild game, I'm perfectly happy with. Oh, yeah. I'm taking a test. Mm. Like I said, I've never failed. Yeah, sorry guys, I have to try this. Uh, just for your information, all I did to prepare this going onto the spit 
was just use a, a combination of salt, pepper, garlic powder, and a few other spices that I keep just for this type of a, a thing. Nothing uh, extra special. I don't think it needs it. I think the natural flavor of this has come through nicely. Look at that. Mm. Oh, that is just, that is just spot on. Okay, I'm gonna have a few more pieces of this and uh, then we'll, I'm gonna have to show you again. Look at that. Perfect, just the slightest bit of pink right down here. And that's probably the side that got the least amount of heat, but right through the rest of it, it is spot on. Okay, I'll have a few more pieces of this and then we'll close the video up. All right, I'm having one more piece before we close the video out so it doesn't get cold on me. Like I did mention, it's a cool day out here. Beautiful, beautiful. I'll just put that off to the side here. Okay, a few final comments on the Chef's Temp Final Touch X10. Okay, so you can get cheaper digital thermometers. I don't know that you can get better ones though. So if you want to treat yourself to a good piece of equipment, and here's the thing, you're going to find more and more ways to use this than you would have ever considered. I've never used a thermometer so much in my life as after having received this for testing. My wife says, where's the thermometer? I need to check a roast in the oven. And we're all using it in the house and we're finding more and more uses for it because it's just that easy to use, just that easy to read. It is so accurate. I, I won't go through the calibration process, but uh, um, it's, it's very simple to follow and it's in the book and there are videos on their website if you want to see how that's done. But yeah, I mean, this really is almost revolutionary for backyard barbecuers. Now I know guys, no one wants to admit that, that they're not good, right? Everybody wants to be able to say, yeah, I can just tell from experience. I can tell by the color, I can tell by the texture, I can tell by the amount of time that it was on there that it's gonna turn out perfectly. Maybe, maybe you're right. That's a little harder when you do that out in the woods. Okay, you can get to be that good on a barbecue, but when you're out in the wood, woods and there are so many variables, the fire, the fire gets hot, the fire cools down, especially in, when you're using a wood stove like I did today. The ambient temp temperature, the amount of wind, uh, all those things, all those variables. You look at a piece of meat, to be honest, I wasn't even sure that was done because I'm used to seeing crusty meat that has some black on it because that's usually the way you hold it over a flame and it blackens it. There was no browning or blackening on that at all. It was just perfectly browned and as you saw, perfectly cooked. I've never had a fail. Now, do I sound like I'm a fanboy? I'm a little bit excited. Well, that's because, to be honest, I am. I have not used a piece of kit that has been so revolutionary in the way I barbecue or cook at home or out here in the woods as I have with this thermometer right here. The big thing I think for most people is, Yes, as bushcrafters, the more you get out here, the more you cook over a fire, the greater your experience, the better you get at it. But on the pathway, on the journey to getting there, you're gonna ruin a lot of meals, to be honest. It's either gonna be overcooked and burnt, or at least burnt on the outside and way undercooked in the center, so that by the time you take it off, the outside isn't all that good, and the inside, well, is it even safe? That's the big thing, is it even safe to eat? Okay, I think I've preached long and hard enough on the Chef's Temp Final Touch X10 device. I will be putting all the information I gave you, including the links to where you can purchase this, all the specifications, all those key features, all of that will go in the video description below. If you have any comments or questions, then please put those in and I'm happy to respond to them. Uh, yeah, get out and explore and take that path less travel because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.